in reading the account of the gathering demoniac in the gospels, we find that Jesus comes across a man that is what some would call possessed by demons, but he was certainly under the influence of demons and he had quite a few of them. A lot of people estimate over 6,000. Jesus expelled the demons and the man was healed and he was found in his right mind. Seeing as how we're on this uh, Halloween season, the question came across, you know, how many similarities were there between those that would celebrate Halloween and the gathering demoniac. And so this very short uh, PowerPoint is going to compare the two. It's gonna be a brief comparison of the gathering demoniac and those that celebrate Halloween in your local neighborhood. Mark is one of the people that gives an account of this demoniac. And what he says is the man had an unclean spirit. And we know that means that he was under the influence of demons. We know that one of the Halloween practices is to dress people up young and old as devils and demons and witches and sorcerers. And one really wonders if Mark would look on that type person and how he would describe them, seeing as how the one with an unclean spirit was described under similar descriptive terms. Next, Mark says that this guy that was oppressed by devils, he had his dwelling among the tombs in Mark 5.3. And so the qualifier for this demoniac was someone that chose to live in a graveyard or someone that was comfortable with the decay of death. It's something to see that around the Halloween times, people literally decorate their homes as if they lived in a graveyard or very close to a graveyard. And sadly, some would death dress up their children as if they were ghouls or uh, beings that were close to or acquainted with or that have died. Some even dress their kids up as vampires. Mark also talks about this demoniac, and he says that this guy couldn't be bound, not with chains, because he'd been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. That's Mark chapter 5, verses 3 through 4. And so the qualifier there is that this person was someone that refused to be controlled. As we look on a number of the Halloween co costumes, a number of them fit the bill of someone that refused to be controlled. People in chains, uh, people that are uh, posing as inmates, that's their costume. Burglars that don't wanna follow the law, pirates that don't wanna follow the law, people that refuse to be controlled. It's a popular costume genre among those that would go and celebrate Halloween. And this is part of the description that Mark gave of this gathering demoniac. Further, Mark says in Mark 5, 4, that no one could tame this demoniac, meaning that this, this guy, he refused to be tamed. And so now I start to picture all the costumes of these beasts that are not able to be tamed, like the abominable snowman or, you know, a werewolf, Godzilla, uh, King Kong, all these figures and uh, some cartoon characters, some Hollywood characters and beasts that just could not be stopped and or tamed by humanity. Mark goes on in the fifth verse of Mark 5 to say that this guy night and day was in the mountains and in the tombs. So this is a person that was constantly displaced, preferring desolate and deadly places. Kind of reminds me of the streetwalkers, folks that are never at home because they're out in the streets doing things in desolate, that is to say empty and uh, deadly places, like your pimps and your prostitutes, your, your gangbangers, your drug dealers, just out there in the, the wilderness, if you will, uh, and instead of being at home, tending to home life, they're out doing bad things in desolate places. Mark also says that this guy, this demoniac, was day and night constantly crying. That's in Mark 5.5. 5. This is indicative of someone that is deeply depressed and under constant psychological torment, just like some of the masks that are put on when people go out trick-or-treating. You know, the, the sad clown masks or the, the scream masks that have this uh, lowered eyebrows as if there's sadness and an open face as if there's crying and mourning going on. Mark said that this guy, not only was he always crying, but he was in the mountains and the tombs like we talked about, uh, but he was also, in Mark 5.5, 5, he was also cutting himself with stones. Now that's a major problem. 
know, this guy, he, he practiced self-harm and he showed suicidal ideation. He was cutting himself with stones. He was hurting himself. This reminds me of some of the other costumes I see. Some of them even given to children where, you know, a, a child would put on some sort of a, um, a, a head brace and it would look like he has a knife put through his head or someone would get some sort of makeup ordeal around their chest to look like they've been shot or, or someone would put a knife near their chest and make it look like blood. All these imitations of self-harm and suicidal ideation, all these are characteristic of Hollywood or Halloween costumes. In the sixth verse of Mark, we find that this demoniac saw Jesus afar off as a demon-possessed person, and he ran to worship Jesus, which indicates that even as a demon-possessed person, he was double-minded. He was influenced by darkness, yet drawn to the light. He was double-minded and unstable. And one of the most popular sets of costumes or genres are the unstable or those that have a dual nature. You know, unstable people psychologically, you know, like the Joker or Harley Quinn. Uh, they're, they're called heroines or uh, anti-heroes, but a lot of people, you know, they, they deify them and make them great and desirable, like the, um, the mermaid, which is half fish and half human, or half man, half horse. All these um, uh, dualities are, are, are portrayed in Halloween as something to be celebrated instead of the purity of unity or having oneness of mind, oneness of nature. In the seventh verse of Mark 5, we find that this guy, when he, this demoniac, when he came in contact with Jesus, he started saying things like, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? You see that this demoniac, he expressed recognition of God and wanted to be left alone. This is so characteristic of the mentality of so many, especially those that are professing uh, faith believers and God fears. They kind of want to be God fears at some points, but they want to celebrate Halloween and they expect to be left alone as if God can be just put off or shoved in a corner whenever they feel like it so they can go and worship a different God on Halloween. The gathering demoniac goes on to after he was asked to be left alone, he said, I, I, he cried and in Mark 5, 7, he said, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. You see, the demons in this demoniac knew that judgment would bring torment because they were condemned already. And the qualifier here is that this demoniac begged God not to judge them. This is something we hear so often especially of those that would echo the words of God to their human brothers and sisters. So often the response is, don't judge me. Don't judge me, don't judge me. Sadly, some of them say only God can judge me, but what they're saying is leave me alone. I don't wanna hear what you have to say. Don't judge, judge me. It's really sad, it's, it's a prevailing attitude. Well, Mark wasn't the only one that was privy to this understanding about this demoniac. Uh, Matthew, the, the disciple, he also recounted this incident, and Matthew put some different information in it because he remembered some things uh, that were uh, extraneous to Mark's account. Matthew says that this guy was exceeding fierce so that no man might pass by that way in Matthew 8, the 28th verse. This means that the qualifier for this demoniac, according to Matthew, was that this guy was excessively violent and prone to attacking passersby. Now, this is yet another genre of the Halloween costumes that are out there, the, the serial killers, the Freddy Kruegers and the Mike Myerses, you know, the, the Chuckies and, and the Pennywise. All these guys are uh, main characters of horror movies. And in those horror movies, people are victimized even though they're innocent. And sadly, some people dress their children up to look just like them. Luke also chimed in because Luke had quite a bit to say about Jesus's, uh, uh, his, Jesus's earthly ministry. G Luke says about the gathering demoniac that there was a certain man and he had devils a long time and he wore no clothes in Luke 8 verse 27. And that means that this guy had a long standing relationship with demons and he wore few clothes. Few to no clothes. A number of the young adults have taken Halloween and use this occasion to wear costumes that are basically clothes that would be inappropriate 
at any other time of the year, at least while the sun's up. You know, clothes that expose body parts that are generally covered by those with acceptable decorum. We're talking uh, bikinis worn out in the open. We're talking uh, wrestling singlets, banana hammocks, uh, things that would not be befitting public wear. They wear it on that night. They wear very few to no clothes, similar to that gathering demoniac, according to Luke's account. Luke also says that it was actually the devils that drove the demoniac out into the wilderness. And so the qualifier here is that uh, the, the certain folks are forced by demons to be on the run and isolated from the community. And there are certain Halloween costumes that would portray that. Like Gollum from Lord of the Rings, that guy was a, it was a cave dweller. Or, you know, the mountain man that's usually away from folks, away from the community. Or uh, something like a Tarzan character that's away from the human community. There are portrayals of this being driven into the wilderness in a lot of the Halloween costumes. And so the question is, in a holiday that celebrates death, celebrates witchcraft and devil worship, what business does a Christian have celebrating on this time or at, the, at this time? You know, what business does one that is part of the kingdom of light have out there celebrating with darkness? What fellowship does light have with darkness? I would ask you two questions. Do you qualify as a Halloween demoniac? And worse, do your children qualify as Halloween demoniacs?